this recent Apple keynote, WWDC 2020, where no new hardware was announced, was one of the biggest Apple keynotes of all time, or we're gonna remember it that way. Let's talk about why. We got all the big software announcements that we would expect, like iOS 14, I've been running the beta for a few days now, and it's great, it's been super stable. The app library feature is fantastic. But what I can't stop thinking about is what's gonna happen when Apple moves to their own silicon. Mac OS Big Sur was announced, which was a huge design refresh, and certain apps like Safari are just completely new, lots of new stuff and messages. But all, all of this, all of this is dwarfed by the news that we're moving to Apple Silicon. And I wanna talk about what that could mean. The purpose of this video is simple. I just made a list of all the crazy things that seemed like they would never happen to the Mac and are suddenly probable now that Apple is moving to their own silicon. And let's start with the basics. They talked about this in the keynote, but the power per watt that you can get out of these Apple ARM processors is amazing. That's why iPhones have been so incredibly fast and faster than laptops at certain processes. Same with the iPads. They've been incredibly overpowered for what they are. They have so much juice in here and what happens is you have more power than you need as you start opening up new option. The most obvious is that we can expect these new Macs to have incredible battery life. Like we're talking two to three times better battery life. I don't know how much because I don't do that kind of math, but based on what we see in our mobile devices, it's gonna be way better than anything we've ever seen in an Intel Mac. And then there's the fact that because there's less electricity, there's less heat, which is why we've never had a fan inside of an iPhone or an iPad. So we can probably expect fanless MacBooks. Or what happens when you take all of that power and you do put a fan in it with something like an iMac or a Mac Pro? And then I'm just getting ahead of myself because we have no idea what Apple's gonna be able to do once they put these in big, powerful, body. So let's talk a little bit more about laptops first. So we've removed your fan. Now your computer is perfectly silent all the time. So you take out the fan, you don't need as much battery. All of a sudden the machines can get thinner if they want to. But there's another interesting direction that this can go. If you've taken a look at the new operating system, Big Sur, a lot of the design components are much bigger than they ever used to be. So your first instinct may be to take Apple at their word that it's just to look more similar to what's happening on the iPad or the iPhone. They're all more in harmony but I think there's something else going on here. And obviously I didn't figure any of this out. Everybody in the Apple community has been talking about it. But when you look at the new design language, it really looks like touch screen Macs are happening soon. This isn't something I've been waiting for. It wasn't on my wish list at all. But here's the really big thing that this is directly tied to and is extremely important to me and any other, especially creative professionals out there. Mac OS 11 can also run iOS and iPad apps natively without any changes to the apps, just out of the box by default, they can come in through the app store and run on your Mac. And why is this exciting? Because the iOS ecosystem is incredibly mature and there are tons of great apps on here. Games, all your, you can, you can play games on your Mac now, that's cool. But more importantly for me, something that's been happening on phones is that there have been a lot of apps that are written for fun and games that have professional uses. For example, open up Instagram right now and start flipping through the filters. The fun effects that you're getting from these filters are incredibly hard to do in the professional world. Like you need to have real expertise and some of it I just can't even do at all. There was this beard removal filter in Snapchat the other day. It did a better job than DC did removing Superman's mustache. And it does all that real time on a phone. Imagine what can happen when you put a big computer maybe with the fan in it behind that same artificial intelligence. And that's part of it too, is that Apple has been developing this machine learning infrastructure that developers can easily tap into. So it's been incredibly accessible for them to build these very creative and complicated apps, but relatively easily, now we can start using professional versions of those on the Mac, at least that's what I'm hoping. So if we've added a touch interface, now the screen of the Mac gets a little bit thicker. What that also means is there's room to add a better webcam in there. That doesn't sound very exciting, except all of a sudden we've all been in quarantine and on Zoom calls all the time and realized our webcams are terrible. So if we could have an iPhone quality camera in our laptops, it'd be a bigger deal than you think. But guess what else that means? Face ID, not unlikely. Apple Silicon has a ton of security built into it that is part of the hardware. Like it's not just software written in there, it's in the physical chips. And that means that is directly inherited by the Mac. And it probably explains why we've been waiting for Face ID for a while. Like it feels like it should have already happened, but in the context of these new ARM Macs, it makes sense that it didn't happen earlier. And a few more things about the display. Let's please, please, please add ProMotion, faster refresh rates. They 
should be the new normal. I think like retina should start to just include fast refresh rates. And pencil support, I wanna see pencil support everywhere. I don't know what it would look like to draw on a MacBook. It seems kind of awkward, but it should be there. It'd be great. Another one is cellular connectivity. I mean, it's easy enough to do it in phones. It's already there in our iPads. This seems like a great opportunity to bring it into our computers. Why not? And to be honest, I hadn't thought of this one myself. I was listening to the latest episode of Upgrade, one of my favorite Apple podcasts, and they went through a similar thing that I'm doing right now. I swear I didn't steal idea, but you should go listen to it. There's a link in the show notes. They talked about all this stuff too. Even better though, you should go to stallmanpodcast.com where I had Stephen Hackett on from Connected the other day and Maddie Hapoya. We talked about WWDC, the future of the Mac, all the same stuff as we're talking about here, stallmanpodcast.com. I realized that a side effect of the touch screen is that the touch bar is likely to go away because it's redundant. I mean, it already was redundant, but even more so. Do you remember a few years ago when it felt like Apple was kind of abandoning the Mac for professionals? They weren't updating the graphics cards often enough. They had made this unreliable keyboard it just felt like they'd focused so much on their mainstream audience that they'd kind of forgot about us developers and creative professionals that just have more demands of our computers. They just need to perform at a higher level. What's really reassuring is that Apple has said this whole transition will happen within two years. That might seem like a little while. They actually did some of the previous transitions faster than that, but keep in mind that they just announced the Mac Pro. And right now there are no ARM processors that could come even close to replacing what's in a Mac Pro. So if Apple feels like they can transition the whole lineup in two years, that means they have something very powerful coming down the line. There are so many things happening, I'm still processing it. Anything I missed, just come tell me on Twitter. I'm at Stallman. And again, go to stallmanpodcast.com. Way more in depth, because YouTube videos are too short. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next video.